How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine part 32. Finishing the project, this is the last part of this series, and it starts off with me going backwards, removing parts, dismantling things. That's because I don't like the way this oil pump looks. I like the way it's made mechanically, it's very good indeed, but I don't like the angularity of the arm, and I certainly don't like the colour of it. So what I'm going to do is clean off all the paint and round the end of the arm. I need to be careful with this though because currently it's full of steam oil and A I don't want to waste the steam oil and B I don't want it all over the bench or even worse I don't want it on my trousers. In this clip I'm just taking off the domed nut that holds the bracket onto the engine. It's good to have things that are very simple now and again and this is very simple. I once had a girlfriend like that. In this clip I'm pouring the oil from the lubricator back into the oil can and it's really thick and sticky. And thinking about that statement, I also had a girlfriend many years ago a bit like that too. So now it's time to do two things. Get rid of all the oil from within the lubricator, and get rid of the paint from the lubricator. So I'm using cellulose thinners for this, or lacquer thinner as it's known in the USA, and this removes the paint almost straight away. Time for a health and safety warning. If you're going to use this stuff, use gloves because it's not very good for you. But, as you can see, I'm not really dipping my fingers in it very much. And I think I've covered on many occasions why I don't wear gloves. The paint is coming off this lubricator very easily. Sometimes, though, it's not always the case. Removing the paint from very old steam engines, particularly where the paint has been burnt on, is quite difficult. Sometimes I do have to resort to nitromores, the paint remover. And that's very nasty stuff. I don't touch that at all. Just before I started the paint removal process, I spray painted the bracket using some etch primer and hopefully this will stick to the metal and won't flake off. As this is the final episode in the series, I thought it was a good idea to do a little bit of painting. But it is a very little bit of painting, just this bracket I'm afraid. And in case any viewers are in doubt as to what this colour is, it's green. Great Northern Railway green to be exact. I've refitted the lubricator to the bracket, and the bracket is still wet. It's a bit naughty doing that, but I had to do it for the video, otherwise I would have had to have gone into another day. I think the lubricator looks much better in brass. I've rounded the end of the arm, so that's a bit better too. You may also notice that I've made a pair of stainless steel driving pins, one for the eccentric end and one for the oil pump end. And I'm just touching up the green paint where I marked it. And I think the time has come to give the engine a quick test run. When I get the engine to this stage, particularly because it's quite a nice old 5A, I have to fight going into play mode, just sitting watching the wheels going round. I have to think, no, I've got lots of other jobs I need to be getting on with. But I do like the sound this engine makes, so I'll stop talking over it and let it run for a moment. Right, that's enough of that. I have a lubrication system to make. A few weeks ago, I built a lubricator. And this lubricator uses a very small boiler feed pump that sits on a brass tank that's full of oil. And as you move the handle, it pumps the oil out of the brass tank. And the idea of this is to pump oil from the brass tank up to the crosshead. Originally on this engine, there were two unions fitted to the crosshead guide, the central trunk. So all I'm going to do is pipe up these two fittings on the trunk guide to my hand pump and for this I need a 2 into 1 adapter. And that's what I'm making currently. Making this 2 into 1 adapter is quite self explanatory so I'm not going to go into great detail as to how I made it, but I will show it on the screen. I was born in a small town in the north of England and when I got to 19 years of age I left this small town and became a musician and wandered about a bit. And why am I mentioning this? Well, it reminds me of a story, and I have to tell you this story. A friend of mine told me this story about 30 years ago, and when I think of it, it still makes me smile. Tickets had started to appear in shop windows, advertising the fact that a faith healer was about to visit the town. 
and it was all going to be a really big grand affair in the town hall. Now, a big grand affair in a town hall in a small town is not the same as a big grand affair in a large city. So on the night of the Faith Healer's visit, the hall was packed. It had about 15 people in there. And the Faith Healer opened the show by asking if there was anyone in the audience who required healing. And with great difficulty, a man who could hardly walk at all made his way onto the stage with help from some other people. Even with the two crutches the man was holding, he was really struggling to walk at all. So the healer did the usual thing, waved his arms about, put his hands on him and said, Right, go behind the curtain, you've been healed. The next person who came up to be healed was a man with a really bad stutter. It was really, really bad, he could hardly speak at all. So once again the healer put his hands on the man with the bad stutter and said, You've been healed, please go and stand behind the curtain. And that was about it, just two people wanted to be healed. So the healer was a bit thrown by this and started to busk it, and he said in a very loud theatrical voice, To the man who came on stage earlier, throw down your sticks and walk out from behind the curtain. And there was nothing, not a sound. So he said once again, To the man who came on stage earlier, throw down your sticks and walk out from behind the curtain. You've been healed. And there was still nothing, not a sound. And then the other man said, with a trembling voice, it's f f f f fallen over. I'm really sorry about that, and it's a really old joke, and I'm not poking fun at the disabled. I just find that amusing. I've been busy cutting threads on pieces of brass. These are quarter by forty threads, and what I have to do now is drill one more hole in the back of the block to take another threaded part, and once it's all silver soldered together, it looks like this. All I have to do now to complete this small component is block up the hole in the end. I threaded this 4BA, so all I'm going to do is screw in a 4BA brass bolt. I mustn't forget the Loctite 603 though, that's to hold what's left of this bolt in place, and once I grind off the end, it won't come out. All that remains to be done is to assemble the components. So we have two copper pipes that go from this union, and they go up to the two unions on the crosshead guide. And all I need now is a very short piece of pipe and a couple of unions to connect the block to the water pump's outlet. Or should I say the boiler feed water pump. This started off its life doing that, but now it is an oil pump. And this should successfully pump oil from the tank up to the crosshead. And here's some of the piping. There's the pipe that goes from the mechanical lubricator to the cylinder, and then the other two go to each side of the crosshead trunk guide. I quite like to see piping like this on a steam engine. It's very purposeful, it's there for a purpose, it's not just decorative. Time to test it and see whether it works. I can feel that something's happening as I pull on the lever, and yes, you can see the oil coming out of the feeds and dripping down onto the crosshead. The lubrication on this engine is very clever. On the top of the crosshead, there are two holes, right next to the piston rod. And as the oil that's flooding in down the side of the crosshead guides enters these holes, first of all, it meets the cross pin and lubricates that. And then the good thing about it is that the connecting rod is completely hollow. So the lubricating oil runs all the way down the connecting rod and into the big end and lubricates that as well. Fiendishly simple, fiendishly clever. That's the end of the series. All I have to say now is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. And as in the last couple of episodes, I'll leave the video running so you can see the engine running in. It's getting smoother all the time.